Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and in this lecture of ECE 3400 Analog Electronics, we're going to talk about junction diodes. Junction diodes include power diodes like the 1 in 4001 and small signal diodes like the 1 in 4148 and the equivalent 1 in 914. And technically, it also includes the category of Zener diodes, but we use Zener diodes in a different way, so I'm going to talk about those in another lecture. In some old equipment, you'll find selenium rectifiers, and Schottky diodes are interesting creatures that are not PN junction diodes. They are metal semiconductor junction diodes. And to this day, you can still buy guitar amplifiers that have vacuum tube rectifiers in them. But in this lecture, we're going to focus on PN junction diodes that aren't specifically Zener diodes. And these are generally silicon nowadays, although you'll still see some germanium diodes in use in things like the Klon Centaur overdrive pedal. Here we have our usual symbol for a junction diode. The top part of the triangle here is called the anode. The straight line here is called the cathode. And we usually think about a current ID flowing in the direction of the arrow with a voltage measured across the diode according to this usual passive convention with the conventional current flowing from the positive to the negative in terms of how we're measuring the voltage. Now, when I said conventional current, remember that's our electrical engineering convention. The electrons are actually flowing the opposite direction, and that might be more how a physicist thinks about it. The current through the diode will be modeled according to this exponential relationship in terms of the voltage. IS is a constant called the saturation current, and it's not actually very constant. It varies with temperature drastically. We'll talk about that in a second. VT is called the thermal voltage. We'll talk about that in a second as well. The main thing I want to talk about here is this constant N. N is called the ideality factor, or ideality factor, I don't know, however you would want to pronounce that, or it's also called the emission coefficient, and an ideal diode has an emission coefficient of 1. Now, the actual diodes that you might pull off the shelf and use in your laboratory assignment, things like the 1 in 4148, those will typically not be so ideal, and that has to do with a device physics effect of recombination. And as far as this class is concerned, I'm not really going to get into the device physics aspects of this per se. You can just take these equations on faith and we'll use something of a magic elf model. So there's magical elves inside the diodes and those magical elves arrange things so that the currents and voltages have certain relationships and we'll use those relationships to design cool circuits. Now, something like a diode on an integrated circuit has something much closer to one, but those diodes are really bipolar junction transistors that are connected to act as diodes. So those BJTs have their various junctions doped differently than your standard off-the-shelf discrete diode, so that gives this different kind of emission coefficient. And truth be told, in 3400, we're not going to spend a lot of time on diodes. We're mostly talking about diodes on the road to talking about BJTs. Okay, so let's talk about this saturation current constant. It's pretty tiny, and it's going to vary from diode to diode, not just from one part number to the next, but individual diodes within the same batch. And the saturation current for any individual diode is also going to change drastically with general operating conditions, in particular temperature. So a general rule of thumb is that this may double for every 10 degrees centigrade, or you could say 50 degrees Fahrenheit. There's another temperature dependence in this parameter called the thermovoltage, Vt. So this is equal to kT over Q, where T is the temperature in Kelvin, K is Boltzmann's constant, and Q is the charge of the electron. I'm not really going to worry about what the exact numbers are here. Just if you plug in some typical values like 62 degree Fahrenheit or 290 Kelvin, and a whole bunch of people here on YouTube explained to me that you don't actually put a degree here, live and learn. Anyway, for this kind of temperature, Vt is around 25 millivolts. Another common number you'll see people use is 26, which is what you get from rounding this number up, this 25.86 millivolt. 
and that is associated with, say, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice that the dependence of IS on temperature indicates that higher temperatures give you higher currents. But the way T factors into the denominator here, it looks like this has an effect where higher temperatures give you lower currents. So these two effects fight, but this one wins. So ultimately, higher temperatures give you higher currents. In my ECE 4450 analog circuits for music synthesis class, I spend an entire lecture talking about how to deal with the effects of temperature variations in transistors. In an exponential voltage to current converter, we use a pair of transistors to deal with the temperature variation of the saturation current, and we use a special kind of resistor called a TEMPCO resistor to deal with the variation of the thermal voltage, VT. As far as ECE 3400 goes, we generally won't worry about those temperature-dependent effects too much. I'll usually tell you what IS is, or I might ask you to estimate it from a graph or something like that, and I'll usually specify what value of VT I want you to use. Notice that if I were to plug in 0 for the voltage difference across the diode, I wind up with 1 minus 1, which gives me 0. And notice that if I backward bias the diode, i.e. if this voltage is negative, the result isn't zero. There is this minus one sitting here. So if I give it a negative voltage that is large in absolute value, I would wind up with a current of negative IS. But remember that this current that's flowing this opposite direction is very small because IS is very small. So usually when people draw plots of this, well, okay, technically speaking, this is zero. And if I were to go to left here, this does go into negative numbers. It's so tiny, it's not even worth plotting. So you'll hear people talk about the turn-on voltage of a diode, and that's basically the value of the voltage at which people think that there is significant current flowing. But that's a little loosey-goosey. That's only really meaningful in terms of certain circuits that we tend to build that have certain operating currents. People will use numbers like 0.65 volts or 0.7 volts, but those are really just guesses as to what a useful value might be. Now, this particular graph is from Marshall Leach's notes. If you look on actual data sheets, you'll see graphs that look more like this. So first of all, this looks like a straight line and not an exponential, which suggests that somebody is using a logarithmic scale somewhere. But one thing that's particularly confusing is that the graph we've drawn here has voltage on the horizontal axis and current on the vertical axis, whereas this data sheet for some reason flips it around and puts the voltage on the vertical axis but the current on the horizontal axis. So by looking at these grid spacings, you can see that they're plotting the current on a logarithmic scale. So this exponential winds up giving you a straight line. Oh, and I should mention this is for the 1N4148, which is equivalent to the 1N914, and this is your standard off-the-shelf laboratory diode. I mentioned earlier that silicon diodes typically have a turn-on voltage that's considered to be 0.65 or 0.7 volts. Germanium diodes typically will have something more along the lines of 0.3 volts. But remember this graph is only valid for some particular temperature. Here that's 25 degrees Celsius. This graph shows how drastically the actual current varies with temperature. If you look up any given voltage, you can find the current for minus 40 degrees C, 25 degrees C, or 65 degrees C. So you see there's a big swing in here. Of course, I and probably you would not want to be hanging out anywhere where the temperature is 65 degrees Celsius, but you might have situations where you have electronics that have to operate at that temperature. Before we close out, I should mention I didn't give you the complete story about negative voltages earlier. If you backwards bias the diode by a sufficient voltage called Vz, and Vz is the Zener voltage, and it's given as a positive number. So we say if the voltage across the diode, the way we've defined it, hits negative Vz, then there's a sudden breakdown effect where a whole bunch of current starts flowing in the opposite direction of the diode arrow. Now, there are junction diodes called Zener diodes that are designed to do this in a reliable, safe way that's consistent. And we'll talk about those in another lecture.
Now, any junction diode will have some sort of Zener breakdown point, but if the diode is not specifically designated a Zener diode, you don't want to operate it there because that will damage the diode. Zener diodes are specifically formulated to be able to handle this without injury. And now I hope you will join me for the next lecture where we'll discuss small signal models for diodes.